tonight uh, until the Lord says not to. But we're going to gather and pray after uh, the service tonight. But Steve wants us to pray for rain. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word I need. No. Pray for no rain. Just for a little while. Oh, oh we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got
declare it in Jesus' name. We're going to keep walking because it doesn't matter what comes against us, who comes against us. We're standing on the promise. And we're going to keep walking. Amen.
we say uh, this Saturday evening, you're not going to want to miss the fish fry and the gospel singing. There's been some things that's been rearranged and, and redone, I guess would be a good word maybe. But it's going to be the same Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You're not going to want to miss it. I, I, Marilyn, I don't even want to I want people to know to be a surprise. Okay. And uh, <laughs> so you know the spirituals will be here to say. Uh, the sons of Zion have, have uh, they had a scheduling conflict. They may be here, but there's something even better. Amen. 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 All right. So, Amen. Uh, if you don't know about it, don't tell nobody. Just come, and it'll be a, a secret, as I used to say when I was a kid, a secret. A secret. So, but it's going to be good. I'm going to say this. Some of the singers from the church will be saying it. Uh, spiritual so, uh, singing. The spirituals will be saying, yes. Well, it'll be a spiritual singing. It'll Surprise. be a spiritual singing with the spirituals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did yeah. hear yeah. it. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. And uh, uh, I don't think there was anything else. I don't think. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so all right. Have a great time Sunday evening. We'll be baptizing. With Amen. 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 Adam and David. And a uh, great time. And uh, uh, I don't know, Dylan, just about that his little sister go down. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> 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 well, we're doing all right, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> it made the Liberty Lights. Has anybody seen it? Uh -uh. Uh, of course, I posted on Facebook, and Liam Taylor said, Was this today? And I said, Yes. So yeah. there was a picture of you and Nick and Taylor. And I sent the other two, too. I said there was two more. Yeah. So it's in the living lights. Praise the Lord. Good. Amen. Good. Yeah. yeah. We, we, want, we want the whole world to know. And we want this countryside to know. This, this is the most important thing about Grace Union Church. We don't want this to be an ordinary place to build a church. We want to be a, an axe. Book of Acts kind of church. Amen. An early church where they turn the countryside right side up. Yeah. A church that is anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost where it's effective in the community. Amen. And so, uh, and we're praying about some things that uh, maybe have taken the gospel into the community. So uh, uh, I haven't heard from the Lord anything different. As soon as I do, you'll be the first people. I'll relate it to him. Maybe he'll tell you before he tells me. And so, uh, but I, I just love every one of you. I want you to know it. And the fire that is here. I heard a preacher say the other night, he was quoting another old preacher, and it said, his prayer was, Lord, dip me in the kerosene of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's Amen. what I want. I want the fire yeah. that raging. Hallelujah. And so, praise the Lord. Well, that's for another time. Let's talk about the Pharisees tonight. <laughs> right. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 22. We're going to begin reading verse 34. The Bible says, and you know the Herodians and the uh, Sadducees had done come to Jesus, and they had done tried to trap Jesus, and now it's the Pharisees' turn. And so the Bible said, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put, Jesus had put the Sadducees to silence. Amen. They were gathered together. Now remember normally the Sadducees and the Pharisees didn't get along. And so, but when it came to trying to destroy Jesus, they could agree together. And so the Bible says, then one of them, which was a lawyer. Now the word lawyer here means he was, this was a scribe. This was one who, who had interpreted the scripture and wrote out scripture. And this lawyer came to Jesus and asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law, or in other words, the law of Moses? And Jesus said unto him, <coughs> Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So this means that we love the Lord God in a complete way. With everything that we have, we love Him. We love the Lord Jesus with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. Which is, under the law of Moses, is the whole foundation of the law. Love. 
We know God is love. When you love God in the proper way, it's no problem to love everybody else. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. And so Amen. Jesus said, this is the great commandment of the law. And the other commandment, he said, this is the first and great commandment. So the love of God must be first. Now let me go further and say, when you love God in the proper way, you love the things of God. Amen. 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 And so that's church attendance. That's whatever the case may be. And, you know, we have people out that, you know, they'll say, you see them out, and I'm, I'm talking about in our community. I don't know about here, but you see them out, and they, oh, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. What about Sunday? Well, the fish bite, bite better on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's right, King. Amen. Oh, I like better on Sunday. Amen. Well, no, then you don't love God in the way that you ought to love God. Come on. Because if you yeah. love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, that's a complete love. And when you love God in that way, you'll love God's Word. You'll love the things of God. When you love God, and not only that you love Him, you're in love with Him. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is telling this scribe Pharisee, this is the first and great commandment. The love of God must be first. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So when you get the first one right, the second one comes right along in yeah. line. And so we know our wonderful governor, he uses this on the basis of being a Christian, which I got used for him. I think his idea of being a Christian and what I believe the Bible calls as a Christian are two totally different things. Amen. You're not a Christian Amen. just because you love people. Amen. Now I like you're a Christian That's right. and then kill babies, which is a whole other area. We'll Amen. Get that some other night. You can't be double minded. Amen. 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 If you love God, you love His Word. <coughs> and so when you love God, the second commandment is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. And so in Jesus' day, they didn't have the New Testament like we have. So we not only say that on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets, but also the new covenant as well. And Jesus said no greater love has a man than one that would lay down his life for his brother or, or for another. And so that is great love. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. amen? amen. And so tonight we're talking about the Pharisees and God didn't really give me a title for all of this that we've been studying over the last couple of weeks, but I was thinking the other night as I sat at my desk in my study, and I was doing my own personal study, but my mind began to drift off into this, what we've been talking about, and I thought, you know, I'm not even really giving it a, a title or subject, but, but something come to my mind was kind of funny, and I thought if I, if I didn't title it, it would be the wonderful world of religion. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, a lot of folks today don't really understand the difference between religion and relationship. Now, what we do here and what we are involved in and what we're wrapped up in here at Grace Union is not religion. No. Religion is a thing that is based on rituals and traditions and schemes and all these things and rules and regulations and, and laws and yeah. all these things. And, and I know James said pure religion is this, but you know, in the original translate, it should have been translated pure religion. It should have been spirituality, right. which is to visit the widows and, and to be pure and undefiled from the, the, the from the things of the world. That's pure spirituality. But religion is different than relationship, which yeah. is the Pharisees were leaders of religion. But when you have a relationship, yeah. Amen. 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 you see, the blessings of God and the power of God doesn't come through rules and regulation and laws, but it comes through the grace of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight, you can either live by the law of God or you can live under the grace of God. But however way you choose to live your life is how we'll be judged. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't want to be judged by living under the law. No. Right. Amen. Right. Because I 
deserve hell with my back broke. <laughs> but I want to be judged by the grace of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. For that unmerited favor. Because I don't care who somebody may be, there ain't never been one human being outside of Jesus Christ that has ever been able to keep the whole law. Amen. Amen. You Amen. have to be That's perfect. Right. And those that try to live under the law, which I'm not saying tonight the law is that, that we should just do away with it because Paul said the law is holy. It was given by God. As a matter of fact, the law, Paul said if I didn't know the law, we didn't have the law, we wouldn't realize that we were sinners in need of a Savior. Amen. Amen. And so the law is holy, but we no single person has ever been delivered by the law. No one has ever been saved by the law. No one has ever been set free by the law. Amen. The law Amen. is only a measuring stick. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. That's why Jesus had to come and fulfill the law. Amen. These blind Pharisees couldn't see that. Because all they wanted to do was put people under religious bondage. Right? Yes. You had to do this or you had to do that. And, and they knew just enough of scripture to be so dangerous. Yes. And you see the same thing today. They had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. Amen. So you can be religious and not have one ounce or one hour of God's anointing power. Amen. Believe you me, I've worked in countless number of churches and helped with churches and, and have even pastored other churches uh, that, I mean, they were nothing more but uh, modern day Pharisees. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. They were religious, but they couldn't hear the voice of God. And so a church is not made up on laws and regulations and rules and all these other things. We have the word of God for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We live under the grace of Almighty God. Amen. And so we'll, we'll get to that here in a minute. But, but the Pharisees, the Pharisees were, were a religious group that, as a matter of fact, the Hebrew word for Pharisees means they were separate. They, they were separate, not, not separate like, like the church, the Iglesia, which is called out. We're separate from the world. But these folks were separate from the power of God. They were separate from the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so they, they were a religious group that thought they were high and mighty. Amen. 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 Yeah, in their own life. I mean, I can tell you the pastors I've worked with in revivals that were just nothing more than author authoritative figures. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. They looked down on the people in the congregation because they thought they knew more than anybody else. Yeah. They thought they were bigger and greater and mightier than anybody else. They they were they were not uh, they were not examples to the heritage and to the flock. They were lords over the flock. Yeah, they, were, they were masters over the flock. And instead, they were blind gods. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 How many have seen that? Yeah. Amen. 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 So, the, the Pharisees, now when you look at the Pharisees, they were a moral, good group of people. They were good. They were moral. They were zealous in what they did. They were zealous. They, they denied self. They tried to keep the law, but they didn't understand the law. But the thing was, is as they would teach the law of Moses, they had a hard time keeping it themselves. Yeah. So they would, they would bring everybody else under bondage, under laws, when they themselves couldn't even keep it. And so the thing was, they were self Righteous. Amen. 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 They were righteous in their own eyes. Yes. I mean, you know, I would today, we had preachers that were just filled with the Holy Ghost and power, filled with humility, which is what Paul said in Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind be in you all. And what he's talking about there is the mind of Christ, which was humility, which was humbleness. That Christ came as a humble servant and died a criminal's death on the cross at Calvary. And 
natural, but these Pharisees were, were mighty religious leaders that were authority over the people. But they were self-righteous. They were righteous in their own eyes. Amen. So what they did was they denied the fact that they themselves were sinners in need of God's grace and in need of the Savior, Jesus Christ, that stood right before them. And the thing that blows my mind is Jesus loved them as much as he loved me. And he would have saved their soul if they would have denied themselves and would have put their pride out of the way. And would have called on this mighty name. He would have saved them and set them free. Amen. And I will tell you, the, the worst sin that has took a many to hell today because they denied Jesus, they were self-righteous, is the greatest pride of sin, a sin is pride. Amen. 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 When we think we don't need the things of God, we don't need the power of God, we don't need God at all. Amen. Amen. Self-righteous is pride. Right. And then, number two, and this is what got the Pharisees in trouble. And I think today, and I've seen a mega churches destroyed because of the spirit of jealousy. Yeah. Amen. When one gets jealous over the other. Yeah. Come on. And then the next thing. When you see churches that have cliques. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight. Great. I've seen churches with cliques. Click here, click there, click back there, click over here, <laughs> click over here. And before you know it, there's division and schisms in the church. This one is against this one, that one's against that one. And they all team up against the other. And that's exactly the spirit of Pharisee. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's right. And the one accord is broken. The fellowship and the body is broken. The arm is cut off. The foot is cut off. The legs cut off. And the body of Christ is no longer of none effect. Amen. 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 It's true. Hallelujah. It's and true. so we have people today that are modern day Pharisees. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, Brother Tyler, I got to thinking about you, your situation. And it's the very same thing. We have people today that want to do nothing but rule and reign over the flock yeah. instead of being little spiritual leaders. Can you yeah. say amen? Amen. amen? amen. And Jesus strongly, strongly rebuked the Pharisees. And, and because that he was God in the flesh, he had every single right to do so. And, and so many today are just like these religious leaders. When we see them in the church, they abuse their authority. Heaven forbid that I ever come in here just because of being the pastor and just putting my finger down, you do this, you do that, or you need to do that. That's not my calling. That's not my business. That's not what God has called me to do. God has just called me to be the under shepherd. He's the great shepherd. I follow him. Hallelujah. Right. And, and, and then I relay to the congregation what God has spoken to me. I don't put my thumb on anybody. Amen. 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 My calling is to love the people. Yeah. And show go. them God's love. Yeah. And to preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So church leaders and all of us for that matter should examine our own lives for the very same sin that the Pharisees committed, which was the sin of hypocrisy. Yeah. <laughs> which is proclaiming to be one thing and living another one. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. I'm not Amen. 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 Because if our private lives are different than our public lives, if preachers don't practice what we preach, Amen. if we interpret or bend God's word to, to fit our own lifestyle, if we neglect what is most important and we emphasize what is minor then we fall into the realm of the Pharisees. Yep. Amen. Amen. I can tell you Amen. how many I've seen. I'm talking about preachers. Preach behind the pulpit. And then you see them out. They act like they don't want to have nothing to do with them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. That's true. I'm calling the horse what it is. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's hypocrisy. 
And and let me tell you something. I've seen preachers. Well, I'm going to hit preachers tonight. Huh? Come, Come on. on. Amen. Come they can stand behind the pulpit and they can preach the roof off the building. When you see them out in public, they're a totally different That's person. True. And I'm going to tell you tonight, <coughs> you can preach to the sun goes down and I mean preach, I mean with kicking up dust. But if you don't live it out there, you don't impress me none. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so outwardly they appear holy. Outwardly they appear clean. <coughs> but inwardly they are filthy. Yep. And I'm going to tell you, you can put on a good show in front of the church. You can put on a good show in front of the pastor or the preachers. In front of the Sunday school teachers. You can put a good show in front of the deacons. But let me tell you this. God knows everything about you. Amen. And nothing is hidden. The Bible declares everything. All things are naked and open before the eyes of God. With whom we have to deal with. Amen. Amen. And so... Jesus called these Pharisees blind guides. So if I could tonight, I just felt led of the Holy Spirit to go through Matthew 23. And I'm going to read uh, just about 36, 37 verses. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Double it up. And tonight we're going to go through here because Jesus gives us the identity of a Pharisee. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said in Matthew chapter 23, verse 1, Then spoke Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples that are still in the temple. And he said, he said, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now that, that's talking about they sit there as teachers of the law. They taught the law, which is really a figure of authority is what this is. So they sit in Moses' seat while everybody else is on the floor. Yeah, yeah. And so they, 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 they place themselves above everybody else. Yeah. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. And that observe and do. Now, Jesus has been here as far as the scriptures go. Mm -hmm. Because what the Pharisees did, not only did they teach the law of Moses, but they added man-made laws to the people. Amen. Yeah. Had no, no anointing, no spiritual side whatsoever. It was laws they made up. And the Bible says, which, you know, one church I was in, we, we started the church, and they sat down, and it came time that some of the leaders of the church got with me, and we got together, and we was going to make out a list of bylaws for the church, and I said, hold on now. You know, just me. Uh, I said, hold on a minute, because... These people that I was surrounded with, I know this is on video, I, I hope they watch it. Because these people had no spiritual wisdom whatsoever. Don't even you know this. Oh yeah. Had no knowledge of the word of God. And I knew the moment the word bylaws come out that I could sense we were going to make some man-made laws. I said, hold on a minute. I said, if we're going to do this, we're going to line it up with the word of God. Amen. No more, no less, nothing else. Because we're not going to do like the Pharisees and make up some kind of rules and regulations that we think sound good. That's going to bring up. And let me tell you what laws and rules and regulations do. When you live by those laws and rules, it brings a people under bondage. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I know people now right in this area. I don't know where exactly now. He was a good friend of mine, a young man. That he was so bound by the law. He said you had to live by the law. You had to go by the law. He talked about the law of Moses. I said well that sounds great and all. I said boy I bet, I bet you work hard every day. He said what do you mean? I said because it seems to me. That while we're in this fleshly body. How hard it is to keep the law. I mean when you, when you went so far. As to curse your mom and daddy. The law said you had to be stoned. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, I wouldn't even be here tonight. <laughs> but Amen. Jesus came with grace. Amen. 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 That's why he fulfilled the law. And all the transgression, everything that went against the law that had piled up against me, he took it and nailed it to his cross. Colossians chapter 2 says that he took it and nailed it to his cross. 
Amen. And moved it out of the way. Yeah. Amen. By his blood. Come on. And so when you began to put people out, I said, boy, you must work really hard. He said, what do you mean? Because I know you can keep the law. Uh -huh. Amen. He said, all oh, that we have to. I said, well, that's fine. You live. Now I don't know where he's at. Last I heard, he was uh, pretty much a raging alcoholic. So that's what the law will do. Bring you under bondage. You can work and work and work all you want to. <laughs> but you'll see, soon find out, there's not one thing you and I can do. Amen. It's about what he has done. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. So therefore, we have the Holy Spirit. We have to walk in the Spirit, not try to keep laws. As a matter of fact, the Bible declares when you got saved, he wrote the law on your heart. Amen. Come on. Now, to, for yeah. me, now I fail, I mess up, I make mistakes like anybody else. But it's not so hard for me to try to walk in the spirit. I don't know about anybody else. But but when you when you have your, your nose in the word of God and you pray and you walk in the spirit, it, it's pretty simple to understand the law of God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Okay, that's for another time. Let me go on. <laughs> so Jesus said that observe the do, <coughs> but do not ye after their works. So you abide by the scripture as long as the scripture, but don't follow after their work. He said, for they say and do not. So they don't practice what they preach. Yes. Right. Right. So what you see here, what Jesus is saying, is some of the strongest rebuke you'll find in the word of God that Jesus proclaimed. And so he said, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So they don't do what they demand of others. Yeah. Uh -huh. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Look at me, look at me. Self-righteous. Yes. Right. Yep. They make broad their phylacteries, which phylacteries was a case that they carried the passages of scriptures in. So they may throw their phylacteries. They, they say, look at me. I know the word of God. I know the Bible. I know the word of God. Well, that's wonderful. You can know the word of God from front to back, but if you don't live it out. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. That's the right. difference between knowing quoting <laughs> scripture and living it. Amen. 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 That's right. And they enlarge the bores of their garments. Now what he's talking about is they do this to draw attention to themselves. Look at me. Look at me. And they love the uppermost rooms at feasts. And the chief seats in the synagogues. That's the honorable seats. And greetings in the markets. And to be called of men rabbi, rabbi, or teacher, which was their favorite title to be called. It's authority. But Jesus said, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. In other words, we're all on the same level. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 And uh -huh. call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. And so, Father, the, the, these, these people here, these Pharisees, they were popular teachers. And so everyone looked to them instead of looking to God. How many Amen. people do we have in churches today they look to the pastor instead of looking to God? Yes. And, yeah. and so uh, uh, and, and so this is all a matter of pride. Now, these teachers knew this. These Pharisees knew that people looked to them. And so they abused their authority. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Amen. So that's like in the case here. I'm, I'm the pastor here. I'm your servant. I'm not your authority figure. I'm not your ruler. I'm not the one to tell you to do this or that. I'm your servant. Amen. I'm here to serve you. <laughs> and Amen. I'm glad to do it. Until <laughs> 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 you start to Rule of me. I gladly serve you because that's what somebody that's filled up with God and, 
And does these two first yeah. commandments, they love God, then they love the people. Amen. Yes. And so, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Now that word abased means humble. <coughs> and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. God will do the exalting. You humble yourself, God will do the exalting. Right. He'll exalt you in due season. So if we see here in back in verses 8 through 10, or be not called rabbi or father or master, only God, only God in heaven has the right to these titles. Amen. He's the master. He's the teacher. He, he's the rabbi. He's the father. <coughs> and so he has the right to this. So now we go to verse 13 and we see eight laws that Jesus puts upon the Pharisees. So it must be something dangerous that could come if they don't heed. So Jesus said, but woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Now, we've seen that in the last, over the last several months. This is Satan's plan, his scheme, to shut up the kingdom of heaven. Amen. He said, and this is what these religious leaders were doing, for you neither go in yourselves. Neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. So they rejected Christ. And they don't allow those that want to go in to go in. Why? Because right. they, because they once somebody turns to Christ, they begin to realize the word of God's opened up to them. And they begin to realize, I don't have to do what this religious leader tells me. And this authority figure, because the word of God tells me I'm under grace. Amen. Amen. And they, they want you under their thumb. Yeah, right. right. So he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses. In other words, they use deception. When you turn on the TV late night, you can turn on the Christian channels, and you'll see them on there deceiving folks, trying to get your money. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to give money, give it here at Grace Union. We can use it to build the kingdom of God. Don't Amen. give it to some. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. wants to take your money and then bless and, and tell you your bills will be paid off. Don't even get me started. <laughs> and for a pretense, make long prayer. Therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. That word damnation means condemnation. See, one writer says religious wickedness is the worst wickedness of all. Amen. Warn to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, now that word proselyte means a convert. But what they do, they make them a convert to their religion and not to the kingdom of heaven. He said, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Woe unto you, you blind guides, or spiritually blind, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a dead. And he said in verse 17, You fools and blind. He said, For whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. And so he said, you, He said, He is a dead. That means he's bound. And so he said, Whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever swept by the gift, now that gift is pointing to the sacrifice. Yes. Whosoever swept by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. You fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift or the altar, that sanctifies the gift. And he said, Whoso Therefore shall swear by the altar, swear by it, and by all things thereon. So everything was equally important. And so whosoever shall swear by the temple, swear by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. So these people made God a part of their sin. How many have ever seen people, they involve God in their sin? Yeah. Amen. Um, they, they twist scripture. To fit their own life. Yeah. Yeah. 
when they ought to be making their life fit the scripture. Amen. Amen. And he that shall swear by heaven, swear by the throne of God, and by him that said to him, he said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and lease and cunning, which were, these were plants that were used for seasoning, and have omitted, omitted the weightier matters of the law, which is judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. So all of the word of God is to be obeyed. Amen. Amen. We don't Amen. take out this scripture or that scripture and then we forget the way your matters of things and try to twist it to make it fit our lifestyle. We have to, we have to obey the whole counsel of God. Amen. That's why me, when I was called to preach, he didn't call me to preach this part, that part. He called me to preach the whole counsel Amen. of God. Amen. He blind guides would strain at a neck and swallow a camel. Or you strain out a gnat. So when you think about the gnat, it was the smallest of unclean animals. The camel was the largest of unclean animals. So he said, you, you strain out a gnat, you swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup. And of the platter. But within, they are full of extortion and excess. That's talking about an outward show. Uh, right. I mean, you know, I can't tell you the number of people I go in. I mean, God just give me the right job. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you the number of people. I, I come in, they don't recognize me when I come in to spray their house. But I've been, I remember them by being at their church preaching revival. And I remember seeing them standing in the church saying it. Raising their hand, amen. But then when I get to their house, some of the most ungodly things are in that home. They say some of the most filthy, ungodly things. You know what that is? They're <laughs> hypocrites. The cup is is clean on the outside and the yeah. bladder. But within, you see it's a heart issue. That's right. You know, with me, I don't care how high one can raise their hand, how loud one can shout, how great of a word some preacher in swelling words he can speak. If he's a filthy on the inside, the words just drop to the ground. Amen. 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 Yeah. I don't know. Maybe this hit somebody hard tonight. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Good job. The That's heart true. is the, it's a heart problem. Amen. Now, you can put on the best show out here, but in the heart is where the problem is. And, and let me tell you, if somebody is truly saved and born again, and they backslid on the Lord, and they've wandered from the Lord, and they are dealing with these problems, you can't tell me everything's all right when you have this problem. No. You can't Amen. enjoy life. No. You can come to the house of God, do all these things, and be wonderful and act wonderful. But if your heart's far away from God, you can, with the lips, praise Him. But if the heart's far away from Him, there'll be no joy in your life. Amen. 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 And you can try and try and try, but until the heart gets fixed. Because Jesus said in the very next verse, He said, Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is worth. Within. within the cup, the heart, and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So when the heart gets cleansed, it works its way on the outside. Right. These people, Tyler, that we've talked about, if the heart would get fixed, everything else would get fixed. <laughs> Amen. Is that the word of God or not? Yeah. Amen. 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 Born to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto white sepulchres, the tombs. Which indeed appear beautiful outward, <laughs> but are within full of dead men's bones Amen. and of all uncleanness. That's right. That's right. You know, every every year the Jews would come and they would whitewash these tombs 
you know, kind of like what we would call pressure wash. <laughs> and they would wash these tombs and white, they called it white washing, where they were beautiful and shiny on the outside. But that was the problem with the Pharisees. They were, Jesus is saying they were whitewashed. Yeah. Right. And so the difference is there's a difference between being whitewashed and washed white. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Somebody ought to give the Lord a prayer. Yeah. Amen. So then, so the Bible says in verse 28, even so you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. So what they did, they paid honor to the, all the old dead saints. But at the same time, they were trying to kill the living saints. Yeah. And so Jesus said, you say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. And they say this, I mean, they're talking out of one side of their mouth and doing something different on the other side. Because at this very same time, who are they trying to kill? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Right. <coughs> Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which kill the prophets. So they have the same murderous heart that their fathers had, their ancestors. Fill you up in the measure of your fathers. He's talking about judgment. He said, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell, which would be their eternal fate? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Why? Because they came preaching in the truth of the word of God. Amen. And let me tell you something, it ain't over yet. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We see it all through the book of Acts, and we're going to see it now in the days to come. I could be very full of the very ones that they lead out right before your eyes and drag out of here and beat and even persecute and murder because of standing on the word of God. Because I, sorry, not sorry, but I can't help it. Killing babies is murder. Don't care how you look at it. Don't care how you justify it. Same-sex marriage is wicked before the eyes of God. Yep. Don't care yep. what you think about me. I stand on the word of God. Yep. It's wicked. But here's the great news. God can save the homosexual. I've seen it done. Oh. Set them free. Yeah. They can do it again. Their lifestyle be changed. Amen. Yes. God Amen. can save me. One who commits abortion, he can save them, set them free. I've seen it done. Yes. I've led those women to the Lord that's committed abortion, and God set them free, delivered them. They got saved and became born again. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And here's the this is how the government, listen, I, boy, this is why the last election was so important, and this presidential election is much more important because I don't care what you think of me, Hillary Clinton I had threatened the church to take away what is it, the final whatever tax uh, 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 I don't want to say 501c3 tax uh, I, if we didn't line up with the, with the, what they wanted us to preach and I'll never forget one night watch because I watch all these things closely because you have to discern and examine who that you stand with and stand for. And I remember her pointing her little bony finger in the camera and saying, you churches and pastors are just going to have to get used to it. I look back at that TV screen. I say, in the name of Jesus, we will not stand for it. We have the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and we will not stand, bend, bow, or break to the aisles
lady told me about a few weeks ago. A Pharisee. She said, well, you know Planned Parenthood does so much more than abortion. I looked her straight in the eyes, but I can feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I said, well, let me tell you something. I said, the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole entire lump. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> you know where I stand. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just throw this in here. This next election, and I don't care what people say, the church better start standing. The Amen. church better start getting involved yeah. in these things. People have said for so long, Amen. politics should be brought into the church. Let me tell you something. That has went on too long, and it's time for the church to start making a stand. And this next election is so important because of spiritual matters. Amen. And we better stand for what's right. We better stand on the word of God. Because if we don't, if this election goes Joe Biden's way, I'm going to tell you, America is finished. Amen. Amen. Finished. Yeah. Right. Amen. There's right. a prophecy. Yep. There's your prophecy. Yeah. America's finished. Well, I, I just don't think you better pray about it. That's right, man. Yeah. Amen. Well, I just don't think God will hand, uh, hold that camera. You better pray about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he sure will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Pharisees. Where was that? <laughs> I know what I was going to say. This is important. I, I didn't talk. See, what the government, they, they want to fund. And let me tell you something, what could possibly very well, 100% sure, happen this next election if it goes one way. I'm going to tell you, our taxpayer dollars will go to fund these abortions. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when all the hell will break loose. Literally. Yeah. And so, <coughs> what they don't tell these folks these women that go in and they want to have what they don't tell the doctors don't tell these well I learned this by witnessing to these to these ladies they don't tell the effects that it has on the mind and on the body no. after it's done because it's not just a natural force that you're dealing with you're dealing with demonic spirits and demonic forces and so they don't tell the depression and the old pressure that comes afterward but Praise God, the ladies that I have talked to and went to, thank God, the Holy Spirit broke through. And, and one lady I'll never forget down in the NHC, somebody said, she's the nurse, so must be out. She was very much in her mind. She knew she was lost without the Lord, and she knew what she had done was a terrible sin. And she knew she was going to hell if it couldn't get fixed. I said, let me tell you something. Jesus loves you as much as he does anybody else. And he died for you and your sins. Even this grief of sin, he Amen. died for that you could be saved and set free. Yeah. Long story short, she prayed through, got saved that night down in the middle of the nursing home. They were like the Lord. I went back several months later, visited with her. That lady had the fire of the Holy Ghost in her. Why? Because God took that memory away. God gave her a new life, changed her way of life. Changed her heart, gave her a new heart. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, that's what my God can do. Only God can do that. Amen. So, let's get ready to close. I promise. Somebody say, You're mad now. That's what God's called me to do. Man on your fist. But it's a good man. That's right. Verse 35 says that upon you, Jesus said, may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel until the blood of Zacharias, or Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. That was God's judgment, which came in AD 70 when the Romans tore down Jerusalem, yeah. burned down the city, which in effect, you remember the Sadducees, they were the head of the temple, they did all the work. So when the temple was destroyed in 87, so was the Sadducees and their work, and they ceased to be. But the, the modern day Pharisees, spirit is still alive. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus said all these things. So I want to go, I want you to go and, and just real quick before we close tonight to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5. 
because this is so important and this is where we are. I've seen churches destroyed by the spirit of Pharisees. Phariseeism. I've seen churches destroyed by authority figures that had no anointing of the Holy Spirit whatsoever. It was my way or the highway. That kind of attitude. And I'm going to tell you, for pastors, that don't work. Right. That don't work with me, I'll tell you that. It's not about my way or the highway. It's about the Word of God. Amen. First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. Here's what Peter said. The elders, which elders here means pastors. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God. Amen. Now I want you to know that this is my answer. This is, this is what I come from as a pastor. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof. In other words, watch over the flock. Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre or not for money, but of a ready mind. In other Amen. words, not to get anything out of it, but because we have a love for God. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. And verse 3 says, Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being what? Amen. Examples amen. to the flock, which... If you want to turn with me over to the book of, of Titus, chapter 2. Titus, chapter 2. So we must show a pattern of good works. We must be examples. That's the best way to lead, especially to lead somebody to the Lord, is be an example. And not say one thing and live another way, but to live out. What you believe in the Word of God. Amen. In Titus chapter 2, verse 7, Paul said, In all things, showing thyself a what? A pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That means it has to be 100% scriptural. So, you know, with me and people that say, well, he uses a lot of scripture. Yeah, I use a lot of scripture to back up what I'm preaching. Amen. So that people will know that it's not something I can talk to, Amen. but it's the word of God. Amen. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. And then when we go to 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse 1. <coughs> Paul opens up 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, but finally, and that's what I'm going to say tonight. Finally. <coughs> John, get in that seat, sit down. Now, it's pretty bad when you rebuke your child and your wife or you. <laughs> <laughs> So, Paul says, finally, brethren, pray for us, which is the Christian view. Pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course, or in other words, that it may spread rapidly. Amen. Which is what we're praying here out of this church. The word of the Lord was time is running out. Yes. So that the Lord, word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. Or in other words, that should have been translated. Not all men have the faith. They've not been grounded in the word of God. And so, but the Lord is faithful. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 But the Lord yes. is faithful who shall establish you. That's you. <coughs> and me. And keep you from evil. 
Yeah. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will do the things which we command you. Now Paul's not saying what we command you, but what the word of the Lord commands you. Amen. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. That means withdraw fellowship. And not after the tradition which he received of us. Or in other words, or what Paul had taught the people. And for you, how many knows it's important who you surround yourself with? Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. And for me in the work that I do, I don't want to be surrounded by Pharisees. Right. <laughs> and I'll say again, that's why I just I just rather stay here and preach and not go to revivals and things, even though I know that that's what the Lord called me, that's part of the ministry. But boy, I just love you all so much I don't want to leave here and go to some other church and be in the midst of a bunch of Pharisees. Amen. 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 People watching this will probably say, well, we'll never have it in my That's fine. <laughs> so Paul said in verse 7, for yourselves know how you ought to follow us. Why is that? Because Paul was an example. He was, he was a Pharisee at one time, but his life changed. And now he follows Christ. And so Paul is saying, I'm trying to be an example. And so you you follow you, you follow this example. Paul was an example. He said, "You yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you." And so Paul said, "Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught or nothing." In other words, you know, Paul did. He he believed in working for his pay. Paul was a tent maker. Yeah. And so he said, "We didn't eat any man's bread for naught." but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. In other words, that he wouldn't be a burden to anybody. Yeah. Come on. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves and what? Example. An example unto you to follow <coughs> us. So we don't want the spirit of Phariseeism, but we want to be examples. Right. Amen. 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 We don't find people with Rules and laws and regulations and traditions and rituals. Because that's not of God. But we take this word and that's the standard. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. The standard. Yes. Hallelujah. And we make our lives fit this word. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's so good. tonight, let's gather around this altar. Let's pray. And boy, it's been tough last couple of weeks to talk about this. I don't like talking that much, let them be around. <laughs> but it's important to know the spirit of the Sadducees and the spirit of the Pharisees. Because too many today have been caught up in religion. And they get caught up in a certain church. And they get caught up and they get bound. And pretty soon they're following the pastor, following man who's a yeah. dictator. No, the pastor is a dictator. Amen. And he's doing this and doing that. And it has nothing to do with the Word of God. And let me say this. Every <coughs> false prophet, every false preacher will have some little bit of truth to go with their message. Yeah. That's why we have to study ourselves to show ourselves the truth of God. A workman that needs not be ashamed of God rightly dividing the Word of God. Yeah. That's right. Amen. 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 Let's gather around the altar and pray. And, and just seek the Lord.